today I do feel like in all aspects of life, people always want to choose the fastest option the way to bypass the most things and get there. Because I think in a lot of our minds, it's like, well, I'm trying to get to from point A to point B. All that matters is getting to point B. So why not get there as fast as possible? And clearly there's a bunch of things that are lost in that. So I guess, what would you say to somebody or how would you answer that question of why someone should take the slower approach when they have the chance of going somewhere faster? <laughs> I think it's another of the huge misunderstandings in today's society is this idea that we're better off if we have a high speed. Of course, the government, school system, every commercial business almost, they all tell you you have to speed up because you're going to build cross-national product and you're going to be a great consumer. That's why you need to have a speed. But my experience is kind of the opposite. So of course, sometimes you need to have a good speed, but by slowing down, like for instance, walking instead of driving all the time, you experience so much more. And of course, when you walk, you can become more creative. The reason why people like from Socrates in Athens 2,400 years ago or Steve Jobs in California until recently, the reason they all kept on walking was because, of course, because it was good for the creativity. They were thinking, they were wondering, and they were coming up with bright ideas. And also walking is good for your intelligence, I think. And it's also good for your memory because somehow if you walk slowly, I think your memory works so much better. And I also think it's good for your emotional life that if you sit in a chair, so little things are happening in your mind. While if you walk, it's even in other language. If you move, you're being moved. You emotion, emotion. So that's just some of the examples why walking is important, but also... I'll try to say this in English. It's also about time in the sense that let's say you're going 10 miles down the street and you drive that distance and it takes you a few minutes and then nothing is happening while you drive that. You don't see anything. You don't hear anything. You're not thinking about anything. It's kind of nothing to write home about. And then if you walk the same distance, you probably use maybe three hours. And you feel the air, you're smelling what's going on, you are seeing, watching into the faces of people. If it's on nature, you see the grass, you see the trees, you're seeing your fellow citizens. If you're in a city, which is very important, if you're going to have respect for the people, you need to see them. You have all these small experiences, nothing great probably, but all these small experiences. Then time is stretching out, it's opening up. And the world is opening up because instead of just passing everything in a high speed, you see it. You interact with it. You get experiences. So then also the world is stretching out, is opening up. That again makes your life so much richer. So I don't think you should walk all the time. I have a car, but we should walk more. We should accept like sometimes just slow down. As I said, being the center of our own lives, not live our life on the conditions of everybody else because walking is very much about freedom and i think that speed up is about the opposite of freedom is unfreedom because it's all the people it's the government as i said the education system businesses that decide how you're going to live your life not all the time but sometimes you should break free